Hey guys and welcome back to my channel Susie Jane Designs. I'm so happy that you guys came back to join me today. Today's video is really super exciting for me because I've been working on this for a while. I did want to put a disclaimer on this video here that I am by no means a carpenter. I was raised by a carpenter but I am not one. And I am quite certain that my father will watch these videos of me building things and he might actually cringe quite a bit or take notes and call me when he finishes watching it and tell me all the things that I could have done better. Because um, he's a cool cat like that. I do really enjoy woodworking. I'm sure I'm not the only woman out there. But for Christmas when a lot of women are asking their husbands to buy them, I don't know, perfume, purses, makeup, clothes, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what people ask for. <laughs> While other women were asking their husbands to buy those things, I asked my husband for a miter saw for Christmas. And because he spoils me rotten, I got said miter saw. And I practiced by making things like these beautiful shutters on my wall. Um, Please don't look at them too closely. They're definitely not perfect. I'm sorry, Dad. I'm sorry. This month and partially May, I'm sure, because this is going to be a slightly lengthy process, <laughs> we are going to be tackling doing minor projects in our kitchen just to make it a little bit more functional for our family. So, all of that craziness being said, I am super excited to share today's video with you guys. If you are new to my channel, please click that subscribe button down below and hit the notification bell next to it so that you can be notified every time I upload a video, which is always at least once a week. So without further ado, let's get to the project. So I did start off by squaring up the edge of my 1x6 board. I used two 1x6 boards for this project. I measured the first piece to 13 and a half inches and I cut four 13 and a half inch pieces just checking each time I made a cut that they were all even. Once I finished that I did go ahead and cut four pieces to a 10 and 1 8 inch length and these are the side pieces. Once that was done, I did use my nail gun and Gorilla Wood Glue to put the box together. I'm not going to lie guys, this part was a little bit difficult to get all the pieces together in a way that they would stand while I was trying to glue and nail them. I'm not a pro at this yet. The best way I found to put this together was to take one top piece and one front piece, glue and nail those together, then add one side piece to each side of the box and attach that before moving on to the other front piece of the box. And hopefully you can just see what I'm talking about because it's kind of hard to explain. The brace pieces that I used inside the box were actually just the edges of the 1x6 that I had shaved off and I just added these to give a little extra support in between each of the pieces. And hopefully you can see how I put the box together. Once I was done putting the box together, I did use my orbital sander just to give every surface a good sanding. I did make sure to wipe down the box and get all the sawdust off before I moved on to staining the project. I am using Minwax in the color Early American to start with. And I'm just going to apply this to the whole box outside, inside, everything, and wipe away any excess. 
While that stain was still kind of wet, I went back in with Min Wax in the color Dark Walnut and went around the edges only with this darker color. And then when I was wiping it away, I used a circular motion to keep the center part of each side of the box a lighter color than the edges so that the edges would stand out. Once all of the stain was completely dry, I had printed out this stencil using my Cricut and I used dollar store contact paper to um, make the stencil. Once I cut out the design and applied it to just some clear contact paper to be able to transfer it, I adhered it to the front of the box. And to be honest, I just eyeballed this to make sure that it was as close to centered on the box as possible and was where I wanted it to be. Took a couple minutes, but I got there eventually. Once I got the stencil right where I wanted it, I made sure everything was pressed down really well and I went over the stencil in my black Waverly chalk paint, it's the color is called ink, and I just did a very light layer of this. I did end up doing two coats of this to get full coverage. I would definitely recommend sticking with light coats so that you don't have a lot of bleeding under your stencil. It's just the easiest way to do it. So do as many light coats as you need to to get that full coverage. And as you can see here, the baby decided that she was going to try and help mommy paint too. Once everything was completely dry, I did go ahead and remove the stencil very carefully and went in with my little tool to remove all those little pieces out of the stencil, like in the center of the letters and around the border of the stencil. Then I took a damp rag and I'm just wet distressing everything. I'm not going to lie, there were a couple of places that it came up a little bit more than I wanted it to. <laughs> uh, a little too distressed, but hey, you know, it doesn't need to be perfect in my world. Once that was all done and dry, I did take my polycrylic, which is a water-based sealer, and I sealed the entire box, including the bottom side of the boards, everything like that, because this is going to be in my kitchen, so I want to make sure that this wood is very well protected. Now I'm taking these two simple handles that I bought at Home Depot. They were $1.80 something, I'm not sure. And I'm just taking some black spray paint that I had on hand and I'm spraying the handles really well. I did end up doing two coats of this just to make sure I got everything covered. Once the handles were dry, my husband did go ahead and help me put those onto the side of the box because I did want them to be even and straight and that's more his expertise than mine. So he just took our drill gun and drilled, pre-drilled the holes for the handle. Once we had those drilled, he put the handle in place with the screws in the back and tightened them by hand. And now the project is done. 
this is what our toaster looks like sitting on the counter before the toaster cover is in place. And here is what it looks like now. And I am so in love with this. That's it for today's video guys. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up for me. That really helps me just to know if I should keep doing what I'm doing or try something different. But anyway, really excited for the next few projects that are coming up. It is also planting season here in Arizona, mostly because summer has already set in. We're already in the 90s. Uh, but I think I'd like to take you guys along with me into our garden and revamping my greenhouse because it looks terrible right now. I really hope that you guys enjoyed today's video and until next time, I'll be seeing you. Hope that you know that's... Hmm. Thank you for... Folks. Who am I? Goodness gracious. Howdy! Folks? The movie Folks is fantastic, by the way. If you haven't seen it, you must. My mother would be proud of me because she's a huge Tom Selleck fan. Just saying. That mustache is on point. And I wasn't angry about watching him in short shorts and Magnum P.I. Anyway. <laughs> rambling again. Ha! Yes, always. I'm never gonna, I don't wanna say that. Such a commitment. Not that I have commitment issues and I love all of you.